An Indian linguist called Mohanty describes his daily linguistic usage like this. I use Oriya in my home, English in my workplace, Hindi for television viewing, Bengali to communicate with my domestic helper, a variety of Hindi Punjabi Urdu in marketplaces in Delhi, Sanskrit for my prayer and religious activities, and some conversational kui with the cons for my research in their community. These languages fit in a mutually complementary and non-competing relationship in my life. Well, bilinguals do not always keep their languages as separate as Mohanty does. A woman in a bilingual English-French family said this to her husband, Va chercher Marc and bribe him avec un chocolat chaud with cream on top. If you're used to speaking only one language, this type of sentence may seem very strange to you. But in fact, it's very common among bilinguals to combine their languages like this. Now, why do we talk of code switching rather than language switching? You need not necessarily alternate between different languages. You can also alternate between two dialects or even two accents. In this example, two young men working in a shop in London are discussing an incident that happened in the shop. Typical young people's London English comes out, so they say free P instead of three P, and they don't sound the T at the end of front, they say front. But they also switch over into London Jamaican Creole. So for example, they say imbi and me bought, which are instances of Creole grammar rather than London vernacular. We can tell this is Creole not only by the grammar, but also by the pronunciation. Now, what's interesting about this? Well, first of all, how do people manage to do it? Is it like an actor who can imitate several voices and accents? It's not really because in the case of bilinguals code switching, um, the, the switching is very spontaneous. They don't plan it. Also, um, what happens to the languages themselves when people switch between them? Do they actually begin to merge? Well, the languages certainly can affect one another. In this German-English sentence, the main verb ist, according to German grammar, should go to the end of a whole sentence. Instead, it stays in the place where you would expect to find it in English, at the end of the first clause. So you can see some interaction going on between the two languages. Finally, why do people code switch in the first place? What do they gain by using two languages instead of one? Well, there are several possible reasons for doing this. First of all, each language has particular associations. So the language you choose can act as a sort of subtext showing what type of message you want to convey. For example, you could switch to the language that sounds more formal or more authoritative if you wanted to give an order to someone. Secondly, if you're bilingual, why would you not use all the resources and meanings from both languages? When a whole group of people does this, then code switching gives them a sense of community and belonging because in a way, the code switching becomes their own special language. I'll give you one last example uh, from a Punjabi speaker in Britain. She's worried that her Punjabi culture is being swallowed up by British culture. She uses the word culture in English, although her sentence starts in Punjabi. In the second part of her sentence, the Punjabi is swallowed up by an English phrase, the repeated, we know it, we know it's coming, as if what she's worried about is actually happening before our very eyes. So if you analyze it carefully, switching between two languages or dialects is not arbitrary or random. 
It allows speakers to express certain things without saying them in so many words. Above all, within families or communities, it becomes the most natural way for people to speak.